having a conversation is Network, and again, thank you for joining me today for Real Estate, Religion, and You. Today, I would like to talk to you on a continued basis of my book, Your Fire. And we're going to pick up from where we left off at last week. So, we're talking about how to sue for wrongful termination. This is part two. And this book is available on lulu.com, amazon.com, uh, createspace.com. And if you want an ebook, download it directly to your, your digital device. You can email me at sblack3001 at gmail.com. And again, thank you for joining me today. Now, we left off last uh, week. We are talking about Equal Pay Act of 1963. Okay, we were talking about how to sue for wrongful termination. If you feel that you've been wrongfully terminated, instead of complaining to each other about the termination, there's something that you can do about it. Whether you feel that it's a small problem or not, I would suggest writing to one of these organizations or all of them and finding out if there's anything that you can sue for. Because a lot of times employers think that they, you know, they get away with murder and, you know, they think they can do what they want to do because nobody has called them on it. Especially these big corporations who've been getting away with a lot of stuff. And here in West New York, with a difficult economy, it doesn't mean that we have to uh, be treated like a slave. Okay, so the best thing to do is to put your uh, complaint down, type up a letter, and send it to these organizations. If they have an ability or if there's a way that they can, you know, feel that they can sue, they will contact you. And uh, if you feel so urged to sue them yourself, you can either hire an attorney um, or you can just go ahead and file a small claims court procedure and see what happens. Okay, today we're going to pick up with Equal Pay Act of 1963. The Equal Pay Act of 1963 is a United States federal law amending the Fair Labor Standards Act aiming at abolishing wage disparity based on sex. It is signed into law on June 10, 1963 by John F. Kennedy as part of the New Frontier Program. In passing the bill, Congress stated that sex discrimination depresses wages and living standards for employees necessary for their health and efficiency, prevents the maximum, uh -uh, what happened here, <coughs> excuse me, okay, basis of sex paying wage, um, sex, the performance of which requires equal skill, effort, and responsibility, and which are performed under similar working conditions except where such payment is made pursuant to seniority system, merit system, a system uh, which measures earnings for quantity or quality of production or differential based on any other federal factor other than sex. I remember um, historically speaking there was um, when the fireman jobs, you know, before Martin Luther King came on the scene or around about the time when he actually came on the scene, uh, well, it was probably before. I, I, I think it was before. And when the fireman jobs were created, fireman jobs were for men. Okay? And women who applied for fireman jobs could not get it. They were discriminated against based on sex. And they were told blatantly, we don't hire women for these fireman jobs. Uh, then they had the nurse job position, where very few men applied to be a nurse. Uh, but then there were doctor positions and women could not be a doctor because doctors were classified as for men only. Um, even back in the day, going back even further than that, when 
only white men worked in the office. And then women started fighting for equal rights. And then they started letting women work in the workforce, but only white women. And then when Martin Luther King came on the scene, he just started fighting for equal rights. Why can't a black person get the same kind of job that a white person can get if I have the same skill? So then they would hire light-skinned black folks because they looked white. And then when the law was enacted, you couldn't just do that. You know, they used to blatantly and openly say, we don't hire Negroes. Or they could have a sign up that said, for Negroes only, for whites only. You know, and so a lot of work has been done over the years by our civil rights leaders, you know, to uh, allow us the opportunity today to be able to have equal rights, equal, equal pay, and equal jobs. And it's up, up to us, uh, basically, to uh, continue to fulfill that standard. Um, what was the sense in them fighting for us if we are not going to take advantage of what they fought for? Okay. We have to learn how to fight our battles in the boardroom and in the courtroom and in the classroom and not on the street. And that's what the basis of this is all about. Okay. So basically, oops. So um, now, just to give you a little background, and uh, American Association of University for Women Members, with President John F. Kennedy, as he signs the Equal Pay Act into law, in 1942, Congresswoman Winifred C. Stanley from Buffalo, New York, introduced H.R. 5056, prohibiting discrimination in pay on account of sex, which did not pass at the time. The issue languished until 1963, when Congress passed the Equal Pay, EPA, or the Act, okay, as an uh, amendment to the Fair Labor Standards Act to prohibit discrimination on the account of sex in the payment of wages to, employ ye to employers. Okay, so, you know, we have to learn how to... I mean, there are wages, you know, the ways that we can fight. And a lot of times you may have been, you know, illegitimately or illegally or wrongfully terminated. And if you feel that you were wrongfully terminated, write a letter to all of these organizations telling them what happened. You may have a lawsuit and you don't even know it. Okay? Um, you can go into detail. You can read the details of that act and all the other acts in my book, You're Fired, which is available on uh, lulu.com. If you want an ebook downloaded to you, I'd be glad to download it to you. Uh, it's only available through me, the downloaded version. Okay. All right, let's get to the next one now. Okay, I give you a little background on all of the, you know, the, the acts that I put in here. Okay. And in terms of the impact, you know, you can read that. Now, the Pregnancy Discrimination Act. A lot of times you may think that you're pregnant, so you're not going to get a job. Because once they find out you're pregnant, you get fired. Well, check this out. The Pregnancy Discrimination Act of 1978 is a United States federal statute. It, it amended it, Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 to prohibit sex discrimination on the basis of pregnancy. The act covers discrimination on the basis of pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical conditions. It applies to employers with 15 or more employees. Employers are exempt from providing medical coverage for elective abortions, except in the case that the mother's life is threatened, but are required to provide disability and sick leave for women who are recovering from an abortion. The law was passed as a direct response to the United States Supreme Court decision in General Electric Company v. Gilbert, which held that pregnancy discrimination was not a form of sexual discrimination okay, under the Civil Rights Act. Okay. It was not a form of sexual discrimination under the Civil Rights Act. Okay. 
okay, which held the pregnancy discrimination, okay, of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. In March 2015, and that was just last year, baby, the Supreme Court of the United States decision in Young versus United Parcel Service provided additional clarity on whether and when employers are required to provide work-related accommodations to pregnant employees. The lawsuit stemmed from United Parcel Service refusal to accommodate a 20-pound lifting restriction of a driver during her pregnancy. Because Ms. Young could not lift the required 70 pounds for drivers, UPS did not allow her to work. Ms. Young provided evidence that a number of employees received accommodations while suffering similar or more serious disabilities. According to the testimony of one UPS employee, the only time a light duty request seemed to become an issue occurred when the request was made by a pregnant employee. Now, isn't that amazing? The court held that a pregnant employee can make a primer facie, meaning a plausible case of discrimination. Okay, let me go back up there to that again. Finish reading that. By showing that she belongs to a protected class, okay, that she sought accommodation, that the employer did not accommodate her, the court further held that a plaintiff can meet a summary judgment standard by providing evidence that the employer accommodates a large percentage of non pregnant workers while failing to accommodate a large percentage of pregnant workers. Wow, now that's something I didn't know. Okay, now check it out. The Immigration Reform and Control Act. Okay. The Immigration Reform and Control Act, IRCA, uh, enacted November 6, 1986. And these laws were just recent, you know. Also known as the Simpson-Mazzoli Act. Somebody named Simpson or Mazzoli must have sued. Signed into law by Ronald Reagan on November 6, 1986, is an act of Congress which reformed United States immigration law. The act required employers to attest to their employees' immigration status, made it illegal to hire or recruit illegal immigrants knowingly, legalized certain seasonal agricultural illegal immigrants, and legalized illegal immigrants who entered the United States before January 1st, 1982, and had resided there continuously in the United States with the penalty of a fine, back taxes due, and admission of guilt, candidates were required to prove that they were not guilty of crimes. They were, that they were in the country before January 1st, 1982, and that they possessed minimal knowledge about U.S. history, government, and the English language. You ever heard of my Mino speaker English? Mm. At the time, the Immigration and Naturalization Service has estimated that about 4 million illegal immigrants would apply for legal status through the Act and that roughly half of them would be eligible. Okay, here's the Civil Rights Act of 1968, Title VIII, Housing. Okay, which says employers cannot discriminate against an employee for having children with an exception for senior housing. Okay, the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, or Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, okay. The Rehabilitation Act of 1973, enacted September 26, 1973, is a federal law, okay, is a federal law. And the principal sponsor of the bill was Representative John Brandemus. The Rehabilitation Act of 1973, replaces the Vocational Rehabilitation Act of 1973 to extend and revise the authorization of grants to states for vocational rehabilitation services with special emphasis on services to those with the most severe disabilities, to expand special federal responsibilities and research and training programs with respect to individuals with disabilities, to establish special responsibilities in the secure, in the Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare for coordination of all programs with respect to individuals with disabilities within the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare and for other purposes. President Richard Nixon signed 
H.R. 8070 into law September 26, 1973. Okay, significant amendments were, wait, were made to the Rehabilitation Act in 1974. The most important was the expansion of the definition of handicapped individual. Okay, Section 111, Publication L93516, December 7, 1974. The original 1973 Act defined the handicapped individual as an individual who has a physical or mental disability, which for such individual constitutes or results in a substantial handicap to employment and can reasonably be expected to benefit in terms of employability from vocational rehabilitation services provided pursuant to Titles 1 and 3 of this Act. Okay. Alrighty, so let's go on. Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. The Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, or ADA, is a law that enacted by the U.S. Congress in 1990. In 1986, the National Council of Disability has rec had recommended enactment of an, of an Americans with Disability Act, ADA, and drafted the first version of the bill, which was introduced in the House and Senate in 1988. It was signed into law on July 26, 1990 by President George H.W. Bush. <clears throat> Amendment and signed, amended and signed by President George W. Bush with changes effective January 1, 2009. Okay. The ADA is a wide-ranging civil rights law that is intended to protect against discrimination based on disability. It affords similar protections against discrimination to Americans with disabilities as the Civil Rights Act of 1964 which made discrimination based on race, religion, sex, national origin, and other characteristics illegal. In addition, unlike the Civil Rights Act, the ADA also requires covered employers to provide reasonable accommodations to employees with disabilities and imposes accessibility requirements on public. Veteran Status Vietnam Era Veterans or Readjustment Assistance Act of 1974 and Uninformed Services Employment and, Re and Reemployment Rights Act. Okay, individual states can and do create other protected classes which are protected under the state law. So veterans are also protected. Affirmative action, and what is affirmative action? Have you ever really wanted to know what affirmative action was? Okay, affirmative action, known as employment equity in Canada, okay, Reservation in India and Nepal and positive discrimination in the UK is the policy of favoring members of a disadvantaged group who suffer from discrimination within a culture. Often these people are disadvantaged from historical reasons such as oppression or slavery. Historically and internationally support for affirmative actions has sought to achieve goals such as bridged uh, inequalities in employment and pay. In other words, you pay me, you pay a black person the same as you pay a white person. The nature of affirmative action policies varies from region to region. Some countries, such as India, use a quota system whereby a certain percentage of jobs or school vacancies must be reserved for members of a certain group. In some other regions, uh, specific quotas do not exist. Instead, members of minorities are given preference in selection process. Okay, in other words, affirmative action, to break it down, means that uh, I think 20%, uh, a certain percentage of um, minorities have to be hired on a job. A certain percentage of minorities have to be allowed to live in a certain development. So if you go to an all-white apartment complex, you know, and there's no blacks living in there, and you know this for a fact, and you go in there, then they cannot discriminate against you if you qualify for the development. Okay, that's against the law. You could sue and win some money. Okay? So, you know, it's a lot of things, a lot of little loopholes. And you better believe it, there's a lot of people out there, you know, that are suing. We're sitting home complaining to each other. Okay? But, um, you know, not African Americans are suing. You know what I mean? And it's time for us to get out there and sue. If you feel that you have been wrongfully terminated, my best bet is, first of all, get a copy of the book, you'll find it available on lulu.com. Or you can contact me at sblack3001 at gmail.com. 
Hit me up on Facebook, Dr. Sylvia Black. Okay? Write to these organizations and telling them exactly what happened on your job that led to the termination. And there's a possibility that something that you tell them could be held unlawful and you could have a lawsuit. And if one of these organizations do deem that you have a lawsuit, you're not talking about chump change, baby. You're talking about getting paid on the real side. Okay, let's continue. Title VIII of the Civil Rights Act of 1968. Title VIII of the Civil Rights Act of 1968 is commonly known as Fair Housing Act and was met as a follow-up to the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which Martin, the late Martin Luther King Jr. was uh, in, in act, ain't responsible for this when they marched down uh, they marched down Fifth Avenue in Harlem and they marched down on the streets. You know, this was his act to let him know. He had a peaceful uh, fight. He didn't, it was a nonviolent struggle. And so we have to need to learn to adapt that. You know, Jesus had, you know, Jesus walked peacefully. You know, but we have to remember, you know what I mean, that, you know, it's a peaceful fight. You know, I'm not trying to hurt you and I'm not trying to get hurt. But what I am trying to do is get paid. You know, I need a job like everybody else. I'm there to work like you. I'm there for a paycheck just like you. And for you to discriminate against me, no, I'm going to sue you in court. You know what I mean? See, now there are laws that are enacted to protect us, even as African Americans. And you heard with the Affirmative Action Law. Okay? Now, while the Civil Rights Act of 1866 prohibited discrimination in housing, there were no federal enforcements provisions. Okay, a 1968 act expanded on provisions act, previous acts. The 1968 act expanded on previous acts and prohibited discrimination concerning the sale, rental, and financing of housing based on race, religion, national origin since 1974, gender since 1988, and the act protects people with disabilities and family. My grand aunt, before she passed, she told me, when she went to buy that house that she owned, they told her she couldn't buy a house unless she was married. That's illegal. Okay? Uh, back when she bought the house, however, this act had not been, this had, it had not been enacted. Um, I don't know what year it was that she bought the house, but it wasn't in 1968. I don't think. Uh, no. It was before that. Okay? And she had to get married first. This was, you know, the uh, society's laws. And she had to get married in order to comply, otherwise she could never own a home. Okay, as victims of discrimination may use both the 1968 Act and the 1866 Act via Section 1983 to seek redress. Okay, the 1968 Act provides for federal solutions, while the 1866 Act provides for private solutions. For example, civil lawsuits. Okay, so you can sue in, in the housing court and legal court and all those other courts. Okay. Office of Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity is another law that uh, uh, is an agency within the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development and is responsible for administering and enforcing federal fair housing laws and establishing policies that make sure that all Americans have equal access to the housing of their choice. Okay. Recognize whether you are or employed at will or not. If you sign a special contract with your employer, you live in a state with additional regulations, or are part of a union contract, you might not be employed at will. In such situations, your employer could be forced to prove that you qualify uh, for being fired. Also, you might be entitled to some sort of compensation. Check with your state's Department of Labor website for information about the relevant uh, local regulations, or you can write to one of these agencies enlisted in this book. Okay, do you have a case for wrongful termination? As I said before, anyone can sue for any reason. But will you win your case for wrongful termination against your former employer? Okay, well, here are some things that you should know. Oops. Okay, where is it at? Okay, here are some things that you should know. Uh, ready? Uh, first, it's important to document exactly what was said by the person firing you when and where they said it and document it in a letter. Send the letter with the information in it about your termination and what happened to any and all of these agencies listed in this book or others maybe that I haven't listed and that you think that can help you. The governing agency, this, uh, the governing agency 
uh, we'll let you know if you have anything legitimate to fight about. Okay? And if you do, you're about to get paid. And we are all angry when we get fired. And it never stops. Okay? You could get fired 20 times, and every time you're fired, you're just as angry as it was the first time you got fired. There are a few, there are a few lawyers that handle wrongful termination cases, but they want their money up front. Okay? When a person is fired, how does the person know if she or she has a case for wrongful termination? Here's a basic analysis that employment lawyers use in these cases. Are you at will or did you sign a contract? Okay? But the company may not fire you for an illegal reason. Okay? It is not illegal for firing an employee without cause unless the employee is a party to an employment contract or collective bargaining agreement and requires terminations for cause. The main anti-discrimination laws are Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Title VII, the Age Discrimination of Employment Act, the ADEA, the American with Disabilities Act, ADA, the New York State Human Rights Law, NYSHRL, and the New York City Human Rights Law, NYCHRL. Several other laws also provide employees with certain protections from being wrongfully terminated, including the Family and Medical Leave Act, FMLA, the Uniform Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act, USERRA, and the New York State Labor Law. In deciding whether or not a person has a case for wrongful termination, the ultimate question is whether an employee violated one or more of the laws in deciding to fire an employee. Okay, whether they, uh, in deciding whether a person or not had a wrongful termination, the ultimate question is whether the employer violated one or more of these laws in deciding to fire the employee. If not, then no wrongful termination occurred. But if the employee violated these laws, then the employee has a right to, to pursue legal action against the company. Okay, you can also recover lost pay. Okay, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, lost benefits you can recover, emotional distress, punitive damages, okay. You can also recover or get reimbursed for attorney fees, practical considerations, uh, jury awards, Anchorage Man, three, well, I told you about the $3.5 million wrongful termination lawsuit in 2013, okay. And, you know, it doesn't, you might qualify, you never know. Uh, what you need to know about filing a wrongful termination case. Okay, we're going to discuss that next week. What you need to know about filing a wrongful termination case. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today for Real Estate, Religion, and You. And my name is Dr. Sylvia Black. I'm a licensed real estate broker with affordable homes and apartments. I'm licensed to preach and ordained as a minister, and I have my master's degree in sacred theological divinity. And this book, You're Fired, is available on lulu.com. And if you want an ebook, download it to your digital device. You have to email me because the download or the ebook is only available through yours truly at sblack3001 at gmail.com. You can also visit my YouTube address at sblack3001 for other videos, or you can watch this video over and over again on there. If you want an audio book of this book, I'll be glad to send that to you. If you want a video book, I'll be glad to send that to you as well. Um, and you can hit me up on uh, Dr. Sylvia Black, at Facebook, Dr. Sylvia Black. Well, don't forget, if you've been wrongfully terminated, if you've been fired, and you feel that there's, you were Ill illegally terminated by your employer, you know, unless, of course, you know, even if you think you did something wrong, even if you came in late every day, you know, you felt that you didn't do your work, they said you didn't do your work, still file a complaint. Send letters to these organizations to see what they have to say. There's a possibility that you may have a lawsuit on your hands and don't even know it. And guess what? Then you don't have to work another day in your life. This man gets $3.5 million because his manager says something to him. The girl gets all his money because protected class. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. Holla at a sister. I'll see you next week right here on Time Warner Public Access TV Channel 20. And Wednesday is 6.30 to 7 and Saturdays from 12.30 to 1. Uh, holla at a sister, y'all. I'll see you next week.
when we be talking about what you need to know about filing a wrongful termination case. Holla, peace out.